This episode of Jessica the Nerd is brought to you by Wheaton's Law. Seriously, folks, don't be a dick. On this episode of Jessica the Nerd, we talk about Valve Software's Steam Machine and the Steam Controller. Let's talk nerdy stuff. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Jessica the Nerd. I'm Jessica. Nerd. Um, so, back in December of 2013, I was lucky enough to be selected out of 440,000 people by Valve Software to hardware beta test their new Steam Machine. Here it is, in all its shiny glory. Look at the shiny lights. Ooh, it's pretty. So anyway, uh, I've had it for a while now, and I've played quite a number of games on it, and my opinion of it is pretty straightforward. It's a gaming PC, just like any other gaming PC. The only thing that's different of it, about it is that it's running SteamOS, which is a variant of Linux. Uh, that's about it. If you've played Steam with big picture mode, you've experienced a Steam Machine's operating system. I have had some experiences with SteamOS that haven't been ideal. Um, the first one being I have a Samsung TV and um, SteamOS, when it boots up, has a hard time with apparently Samsung TV's screen resolutions. It keeps picking a 4x3 resolution, 1024x768, instead of accurately detecting 1080p. And the OS itself has no way for me to change that. Um, this is an issue I've actually reported to Valve, and I know they're working on it. I've talked with their texts and stuff. So um, I'm pretty sure that'll get solved in the long run, um, but it's been a frustration because I've actually had to kind of go into Linux and tell it 1080. So um, awesome. So the second issue I've had with SteamOS is the game selection. Um, the majority of the games that I want to play right now are available on Windows, and there's a very limited selection of games available on Linux. So um, Valve's solution to that is in-home streaming, which only recently got enabled on the Steam machines. And I've tested it out a little bit. The first thing I did was fire up Skyrim, and um, it worked okay. Uh, it was very jittery, and it hicc hiccuped a lot, um, kind of like I just did right there. Um, it hiccuped a lot, and um, the biggest issue I noticed is that right away uh, the Steam Controller's mappings were totally wrong. It didn't detect the Steam Controller correctly at all. There was very little I could do with the Steam Controller. In order to actually play the game, I had to plug in an Xbox controller to the Steam Machine, and it actually started working then. Um, again, beta test. I'm kind of hoping that gets worked out in the long run. On to the most interesting thing about the new Valve hardware, the Steam Controller, which I'm sure everybody's pretty excited about. There's a bunch of dust on here. I'm gonna start by saying these are my thoughts on this build of the controller. Um, Valve recently announced that they're, uh, that they're redesigning this controller and I've seen it, it looks a little different. I'm also not going to comment on the build quality because this is clearly a beta version of this controller. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's not the final build quality, so we'll go from there. Um, one of the first things that stood out to me is that I thought this was gonna be a charging port for this controller. It's not. This is a wired controller. So this controller is incredibly unique. It has a lot of buttons on it. Um, there's some that are standard button configuration, like you've got two bumpers, two triggers, um, and then uh, you've got like your dual sticks for the touch pads. There's still four buttons that are used much like in an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, but there's also a lot more. So you get these four custom uh, function buttons, you get these three buttons, and then you get these two palm buttons, which I'm actually really fond of. So the, the touch pads are really interesting. The, the right one in particular, it, it controls mouse movement and um, when you move around uh, the mouse uh, pointer, it sounds and feels a bit like a mouse wheel. Um, it makes little clicky noises. You get um, some acceleration when you move your, your thumb around on there. So you can flick uh, in directions 
um, like you would on a mobile tablet, like an iPad or an Android tablet or something, or a, or a phone. So um, you can, it, it really changes the way you, you input your controls when you're playing a game. It's not like when you're on a, uh, an Xbox or a PlayStation controller with analog sticks where um, you push forward and you get that discrete amount of movement. Now you can kind of flick and move around. It, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's a little imprecise, um, but we'll see how that changes gaming in the future. You can still use it like an analog stick. You can move your your um, finger around on there, um, and if you move to the outer ring, it'll continue the motion that you were just doing, so it works just like an analog stick. Um, the left pad is a, a little different. It um, is just your movement keys, so like typically it emulates WASD for you know uh, front and back movement and strafing, um, and you get a single vibration when you uh, when you touch. So it's not at all like the right pad. It's it's a bit different. Um, when you use the outer ring on the left pad, typically in game it adds a modifier to it. So like. If you, uh, in, in, in a first person shooter game, for example, it'll be shift. So um, you push up and then into the outer ring and you're running forward. And um, so th this modifier thing is kind of cool and it's kind of not. I'll give you an example. Um, Saints Row 4, if you play Saints Row 4 with an Xbox controller, in order to run, you have to hit the, the left bumper and your directional stick and that makes you run and with Saints Row 4 you have superpowers so you're running really fast around. With the Steam controller um, you don't have to use the bumper you just move to the outer ring and you start running. So here's the biggest problem I have with this when you get into a fighting scenario in just about any game you're not really paying attention to where your thumb is on the pad you're just like I need to move in this direction I need to move in that direction you have no idea that, oh, I'm now in the outer ring. You're not paying attention to that. So um, it's easy to suddenly become very disoriented because your character has run all over the place and even outside of battle. It contrasts with the Xbox experience where you have much greater control over where your character is and when your character runs. So one thing I really like about the Steam controller, um, or should I say two things, are these two buttons on the bottom. Um, these two buttons are, um, I don't know if you call them palm buttons or what, but uh, they typically are mapped to jump and crouch. And um, that really, really works well in a game like Skyrim or any kind of first person game like Portal. Um, for some reason it feels really intuitive to just be able to do that with your palm. Um, and uh, I really like the way that it works. I wish all the other controllers would pick up on this and add this to their um, to their controllers because I think it adds a, a, a very positive experience in the game. So to contrast that, um, I hate, I hate this layout of the four main action buttons. I just hate it. Um, I don't know if it's just because I'm used to the typical diamond pattern on any other controller or not, but it just doesn't feel right um, when I play the games. One particular problem I had was the Y button, which is the one right here. So the Y button standard uh, binding in-game is tab. You'll notice that that's dangerously close to the outer ring, um, which would be in typically mapped to shift. And um, if anybody who's used Steam before um, has ever paid attention, it says press shift and tab to uh, access the Steam layer when you're playing a game. So um, what'll happen is, oh, I want to bring up the map. I click the, the Y button and oh, I'm looking at Steam because I accidentally fat fingered and I touched the outer ring at the same time. Oops, happens a lot. Um, I'm just not a fan of that. Um, so I'm really eager to see how the new design of the controller works because I know it, they're nowhere near uh, the touch pads are down uh, below. So um, we'll see how that changes. Um, and I'm guessing that was a common criticism. I don't know for sure though. One other criticism that I have of it is that um, the action button or like the interact button is typically mapped in game to depressing the, um, the right touch pad. And that's another better in theory than practice because what happens is 
you know, you're moving around the mouse pointer and then you gotta go and press it and um, it's still detecting your movement of, of your thumb, so it's kind of like fat fingering. Um, and then you'll go to click and you'll be off target and um, it's really obnoxious. Uh, so uh, I would much rather have it mapped to like a trigger or one of the action buttons. I guess my opinion is that depressing the pad should be more of a toggle instead of like a key activity like action or interact. My next biggest criticism is that it kind of reminds me of gaming back in the late 90s and trying to use a gamepad or like a joystick or something then. If anybody's a console gamer or they play PC games with an Xbox controller, a lot of games have their bindings and their, their uh, key mappings in game. They'll pick up that you're using an Xbox controller and give you the correct keys on screen as indicators of which button to press. When you're using the Steam controller, you just don't get that. Um, so this is why it reminds me of 90s games. Um, you don't know what button is what on your controller and you have to really get used to it each time you play a game. So the first thing that you do when you go into a game is go, all right, what does this button do? Okay, that looks like it's holster your weapon. Okay, what does this button do? Okay, that fires. Okay, what does this button do? Okay, that's melee, you know. So you have to kind of figure that out. And um, if you're jumping between games, it's really easy to forget or, or or just not be used to the bindings and have to refigure it out. It's, it's, I would really love it if they had some sort of overlay. And I'm guessing with any games that are specifically designed to use the Steam controller, that's something that's going to happen. Um, but because this controller maps as a keyboard mouse and not specifically as a controller for most games, I'm a little concerned about that. I'm a little concerned we won't get that. Um, and that's, that's a problem, um, a usability problem that uh, I think will have to be resolved if it's not addressed. Because nobody likes going in, nobody likes going in and, going, and, and trying to adjust the mappings each time. People want to pick up their game and play it, like right away. They don't want to have that barrier to entry. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't play PC games that are really into console games. Um, or didn't get into it years ago. So yeah, I'm sure you're probably thinking, Jessica, stop being so whiny. You could go in and just change the bindings yourself. Yes, I could, and I have done that. Um, and, um, you know, that it's not that hard to do, but um, I guess my comments are reserved for the defaults, and I think uh, the biggest thing there is that, like I said earlier, people are just gonna wanna pick up their controller and play, and um, I think, the fact that the defaults right now are not the most intuitive makes it um, a bit of a barrier for the average user. And um, I mean, it's an easy fix. So I want to point out one last criticism that I have. Um, the, uh, the, the binding system for the Steam controller doesn't work if you don't have an internet connection. So, um, and some people may be like, well, duh, that's, you know, that makes sense. Well, um, think about it this way. You take your Steam machine over to a friend's house and you haven't connected to their Wi-Fi because you've already got the game downloaded on your machine. You've never launched the game before. You go to launch it, you can't play the game. The controller doesn't know what to do. There's no bindings at all. Um, this happened to me um, when uh, I tried to launch a game um, when I was visiting my family. and. Um, the most difficult thing is there's no way to get out of the game once you're in there. If you don't have a keyboard, you can't, you can't back out. So I actually had to power down the machine and power it back up to actually start working again. Once I was able to connect it to the internet, I was able to get those bindings downloaded and we could play. But, you know, there's no default uh, bindings for any game stored in SteamOS, and I'm hoping that's something that's kind of thought about in the future too. My final verdict of the Steam controller is that it's kind of cool as an experiment, but right now I don't think it's ready for prime time. I think a lot of people are going to ditch the Steam controller for more familiar controls like uh, an Xbox controller or a keyboard and mouse, just because you'll get more precision. Um, I think over time with more revisions and some care from Valve, the Steam controller will be a much more pleasurable experience to use, um, but right now it's just not quite there. So that's my review of the Steam Machine and the Steam Controller. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. 
Next time, we'll be talking about how to teach your cat to yodel in just three easy steps. Thanks for watching. I'm Jessica the Nerd. Live long and prosper.